I have a strong belief that it's disrespectful to get rid of something if someone else took the time and money to give it to me. How do I let go of this belief and make decluttering less emotionally draining? Mm. I think you might call this a limiting belief. Yeah. And I understand where it's birthed from, right? This is also the need for approval that we've sort of been talking about on this Maximal episode. It seems to me that if I'm afraid of something because it's going to upset someone else, A, it's a bit of hubris for me to think that I have the power to upset you because only you have the power to upset you. I Mm -hmm. think all the great spiritual teachers would would teach us that. Mm Mm-hmm. But it certainly feels like you can upset me, Michael. Yeah, right. Mm. Really does. Yeah, we disempower ourselves. I'll mention that Sedona method again because he he has this. He keeps calling you to the basic de- underlying desires to notice what's happening when you have something like this happen. Like, oh, I notice I I feel like I believe this, or I, I'm I'm concerned that uh, if this happens, it's gonna. And, and we get lost in kind of the stories that have spun out, and so it's kind of it's the method calls you back into kind of deep, 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 deep down. What's the underlying desire here? And the three basic desires that it keeps calling up that all of this stuff is built on according to this book. And it, I, it holds true in my experience as I've been doing this method, mm. the desire for control, the desire for approval and the desire for safety or security. And if mm. you can find, and the, and there's nothing problem there's no problem with having control or having approval or having safety or security but when we want them when we're we're trying to get them we don't have them yes mm, yeah when we're looking for approval when we're seeking approval it's because we we're actually pushing approval away in this sort of upside down way and mm. it uh and it even practically tends to play out that way like if you are with somebody if you ever hang out with somebody and you really feel like they're trying to get your approval you're kind of less likely to give it to them, right? You're like, this person feels really needy or really like trying Mm. to kiss my ass or whatever. Mm. And uh, if you're just coming from a place of having approval already, you're more likely to be liked. Yes, yeah. If you're coming from a place where you're worried about being disrespectful and how they're going to feel and you're trying to get their approval you're probably more likely to get into that energy. <laughs> like, mm. don't think of a white elephant. <laughs> don't think of a white elephant, right? You're like, when you're resisting, as opposed to like, oh, I'm noticing a desire for approval. Can I say yes to that? Like, not yes to the story of it, just to the sensation of it. Notice that it's here and just release that and just let that go. And then we'll find, like, you obviously have, uh, sorry, I forget her name. Helen. Helen have a desire to respect people and and to respect have respect and and love and and dignity and if you can just rest in that and trust that your decisions will reflect that as you're kind of inhabiting that space as opposed to trying to move all the chess pieces right i need to do this in order to mm. uh make people and, and and that's where our limiting beliefs they're they're fruit on the tree like is if you can get down into the branches and into the roots and into the soil, some of that fruit, it really just takes care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Man, if I had a pithy answer, I would say something like, uh, there are more ways to gain someone's approval than making yourself miserable. Mm. And that's what Helen is doing. She's making herself miserable to gain someone. And there's a lot, there's so many more meaningful ways to show compassion to someone, to gain someone's approval than be like, look, I'm in, I'm sitting in misery for you. Yeah. yeah. To make yeah. yourself miserable <laughs> is not a great way to gain someone else's <laughs> approval. Right. Right. Yeah. And they're not going to actually feel loved for me being miserable. Right. No, because they don't want that from you either. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless they're you're in some sort of weird S and M relationship. But even then, <laughs> there's a there's a non-suffering. Yeah. In that no, kind there's, of a, still a, there's a consent word. under that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. If it's non-consensual, well, it's no fun. I really am trying to find a way to weave in the dog story that you talk about through your book. And uh, so when I was, so there's a spoiler alert. If you're listening to this, like I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to do a really bad job of paraphrasing it, but it's about this man who doesn't want to walk his dog in the rain. And he starts figuring out, the, a way to avoid walking his dog in the rain. And not only that, but he, he moralizes almost like walking yeah. the dog in the rain. And when I was listening to the story, where I thought it was going was, um, Hey, uh, 
<laughs> it's going to rain in life. And if you think that there's like, <laughs> if you think that if you think that there's an entity out there that's going to not make it rain, you're 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 delusional. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And that I thought the story was going to like, oh, this man is going to accept the fact <laughs> that, hey man, it's not about avoiding the shit. It's about how do you walk through the shit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but it turns out again, spoiler Wait, alert, it's raining shit in this metaphor. Yes, exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I well, mean, the character it, in the story, it kind of, it, it, it might as well be. Yeah. It might, yeah, as, well it might as well be. It, so spoiler yeah. alert, fast forward 15 seconds. If you don't want to hear the end of this parable, uh, throughout this book, but he realizes that there is no fucking dog. <laughs> like, like, he's like, wait a minute. I don't even have a dog. <laughs> and and yeah. I think. I think there's something there for Helen, like in that story of like you you think yes. that you think there's some but there's really Helen, like you're making this up yourself. You're making up a problem that isn't a problem. Yes. Yeah. Here's the spoiler on this. It's like it's the actually on it. the cover. Oh, right. right. Yeah. I, and, and so <laughs> yeah. the beautiful thing you did with this with the book, which by the way, I agree with Ryan. The the I just started the audiobook version last oh, week, gorgeous. but I I just I read the actual physical book when it first came out. And I will tell you this that the cover it's it's a well there's a dual cover here um (laughs) so you have this real simple cover of a man who appears to be walking his dog in the rain but of course when you open up the cover since you've already spoiled it it he's just walking an empty leash an empty leash yeah and then of course there's this uh cover you designed clearly on mushrooms (laughs) (laughs) oh that's gorgeous man the second cover oh Um, dude that's great it's like the most simple cover for this and then also sort of the most complex and the metaphor is obviously that we we are both you know we are we are simple we are complex we tend to make things way more complex but also there is a, a simplicity within the complexity Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash theminimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.